Hey, 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 what up? My name is The Myth, Mr. So UG, and right now, right now with me, I wrote, I wrote something down about this gentleman, as if I don't know him. <laughs> right now with me, we have Lyrical G, a.k.a. Jeff Chintu, a Ugandan hip-hop pioneer who started rapping as early as 1994, a mentor to so many acts in Uganda. Lyrical G <laughs> is considered the godfather of the genre in Uganda. Whoa, he has whoa. nine albums to his name and is currently working on his 10th album. He has been affiliated with groups like Bataka Underground, Urban Thugs, which later changed to Urban Life, The Cypher, but he's currently running his own label, GMC. His breakout single was East African Party, produced by the legendary Ugandan producer Steve Jin. A father of one, rapper, producer, Lyrical G is definitely a legend in the hip-hop and African, wow. in the Ugandan and African <laughs> hip-hop circles. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. Oh, ah, what's up, what's up, what's up, <laughs> what's up, what's up, up man? I can't believe I read <laughs> why, you have write, why, why, why you have to write all that down, man? Is, <laughs> You're it, like, is it a lie? Uh, no, I don't know. I, I feel like you just let them know it's Lyrical G. That's it. Is it? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. We're, we're not going ah, to do that. We're not going to. What we're not going to do um, is we're not going to dim the light ah, okay. on, on people. What ah, we're going you're not to going to, to hold is, back on things yeah, and, and, no, and leave I mean, stuff out, eh? Fam, man, uh, you know, for me, all those times when there would be like the big three in Ugandan music, yeah, I'd be like, those are not my big three. Not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> those are not that was according to what? According circle. to uh, journalists and uh, other people. Yeah, eh? the, but, you know, but then I felt like also... Man, a lot of the us hip hop cats, we became too humble. Yeah, I guess uh, they, they overlooked us for for a long time. You well, know? Yeah, because so guys have, were just humble. Yeah, like I think we needed we needed a, a person like Atlas to shake to things, shake up, things up, and, up. Because Atlas was like, no, I am the guy. Yeah, you know. So I feel like even you, like here, this is what we're going to do with the Soyuji podcast. <laughs> I'm going to be like, yo, Lyrical G is that guy. Nine okay, albums. Okay, that's something that no one in UG. Am I wrong? Uh, Any I, genre? I don't think you're wrong. Uh, no, I don't know about any genre. You, there are people with EPs. Uh, yeah, of course, there's some album. people might have EP. 10 albums. EPs with three songs, you know? Fam, we're not, we're not considering... <laughs> I don't know. Those are I definitely don't. not albums. Yeah. We've known each other for a while. Most um, definitely. How does, how does Lyrical G start... How does the Lyrical G journey into UG Hip Hop start? How does that start? Uh, way back in my high school... Yeah, my high school days. Uh, yeah. That's when I first got introduced to hip hop. Yeah, I think I was in uh, senior two, senior three. But who 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 is who are you introduced to? Who is doing the introduction? Who is introdu introducing? Um, um, um my well, but a couple of friends, you know, have been in school. Yeah. They, they, but they had these tapes and stuff, and then magazines. Yeah. So you know, I'm trying to read this. I was a big fan of R and B, soul, and pop music. Yeah. So of course, hip hop, hip hop was now beginning to you know to take over. Uh, you know, I, I read these magazines and uh, listened to all these tapes, and then you know, that's when I, I realized, hey, guess what? This is this is what we are. I mean, we're teenagers. This is the life that we are. Yeah. Everyone aspires to be. You know, we're like like funky or urban or whatever. So you know, I, that's how I was introduced to it. And so I, so at this time, who are you listening to? Uh, um, yeah, who, who who which which which, which sound are you listening to? And like, ah, oh, damn, that sounds dope. And then. Um, and then, then how how does that make you go from just hearing it, to and then uh, participating, and participating and writing <clears throat> it? Like like, how is that journey like? Uh, I was introduced uh, to MC Hammer, yeah. Vanilla oh. Ice. Yeah. yeah. So I listened to hip hop when it was still pop. You know, yeah. it had the hip element pop. of pop in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you know, I'd, uh, of course, later on, gangster rap comes yeah, out, yes. and then gangster rap, gangster rap comes in, and then uh, Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre. Yeah. You know, that sound, the West Coast sound. Yeah. And of course, on the East Coast, I'm listening to people like Eric Summon, EPMD, yeah. Redman, and then, yeah. you know, 
that's when I felt like, yeah, it's gone from pop to to to, to hip hop. Yeah, and then so you're you're right. So I'm, like I'm, I mean, I, the way they were doing it was simple and uh, and very easy to to relay. You yeah. guys are listener. Because like I said, I'm a fan for starters. Eh? I'm a fan before all this thing comes. You know, yeah. me being an MC, as far as me being an MC is concerned, I'm a fan first of all from collecting and listening to other people and then, you know, writing my own stuff and then trying yeah. to, you know, to entertain my friends in class, banging on desks and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, and then to do whatever during our music dance and drama sessions, you know, I, I had the chance to perform in front of uh, my peers. Mm -hmm. And then they, they took me seriously. They're like, yo, you know what? If you if you persist, you're gonna you're gonna be somebody. You're gonna be so big, somebody that's doing it. You know, on a on a level that, uh, that people you know, can appreciate, that people that can the appreciate culture, you for. Yeah. yeah, and that that's how it took it from there. So at this time, like, who is who from Uganda is is is, is buzzing? Is, is is doing anything at that point? Uh, like, MC Afrique, oh, MC Afrique, because you know I, uh, that time the Dungeon Tour happened, and you yes. know they had all these uh, these 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 individuals put together by uh, the Peter Dungeon Samatimba. Tour was Samatimba. Yeah, yes. 1994. Samatimba put together a group of uh, talented uh, what, individuals. Yeah, you uh, have pa pa Perfect yeah. Generation, yeah. Uh, Steve Jean. Yeah. You have people like Prim and Proper, yeah. MC Afrique, of course, because he was a rapper, yeah. and he was my friend as well, because we we're in school, and he was my head prefect in school. Oh, so you imagine while I was performing on stage. I always remember, yo, I, I remember I attended the, the Dungeon Tour. So MC yeah. Freak was represented and he did well. So I have to ask, is yes. MC Freak who connected you to Steve Jean or? No, Steve Jean. Not. Was MC Freak affiliated with, because on that Dungeon Tour, Steve Jean was, picture? there's that picture with all of them. Yeah, so Peter Steve Jean is there. Am I Steve Jean is in there. Oh, He's, uh, okay. You have Simon Bass Kalema. Yeah, Simon yeah. Bass Kalema. <laughs> Perfect generation. Yeah. You have Prim and Proper. You have uh, yeah. Sematimba. You have uh, was in Roger Mugisha. Roger thing? Mugisha. Yeah. All of them were part of the dungeon. That I wasn't introduced to Steve Jean by any of these artists. Yeah. Steve Jean noticed me at a talent show. We used to you remember we used to go down to deviate and and showcase, we could rap over instrumentals and stuff. So Steve Jean was in the audience. And at that time, you knew he had gone past the Dungeon Tour and is now recording artists at a, but at a studio called AV, AV1 Records on Akashi okay. Avenue. Okay, yeah, So yeah, yeah. He, he was looking for talent, you yeah. know. He was scouting. and So he, you know, he hollered at Vampino from Benon and Vampo's fame. They go and call that dude that was performing with Bataka on stage. The guy that was rapping in English. What's his name? Larry Kojia, you call him. So, you know, I was introduced to him by Vampino. Uh, he told you know he told me you know what I like what you do and I think you can take it to another level. I'll holler at you, take down my number, and if you have a number, can I have it so so we can stay in touch? I never heard from Steve until six months later. Wait 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 <laughs> yeah. wait wait wait. Yeah. So, I mean, we skipped, but then okay. So how does how does Bataka even come about? Bataka is a group that me and my uh, my my former schoolmate uh, Saba Saba put together. Uh, we we oh. incorporated other artists. We incorporated uh, the late Momo MC yes. or DJ Momo, DJ as, Mo, as, yeah. as as many of the people knew him. Uh, Babaluko Chaga. comes in. Babaluko. Chaga Chaga is in there. We had um, Ch and Chaga was a rapper. rapper Chaga was rapper. a rapper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though he's an Afro pop yes. artist right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but you know he was a rapper. He started with us in Bataka. Yeah. So we we used to showcase. You know, everyone had their small group. Of yeah. people that you would perform with you know you couldn't perform alone because you know you can't do it by yourself and and obviously a unit is better than one individual yeah, yeah, yeah. Strength, so strength bataka was uh yeah so, so bataka was uh, was was my unit yeah so we, we, we showcased we, every friday would go down to deviate i remember you you were there you clear cut was there juliana was there no but you so have to remember we we were like after you guys had like gone nuts, yeah, this, of course. Then, then uh, we came in. What what happens is, uh, remember, you guys recorded your album before the Bataka album. Why? Why when uh, when when you guys did your thing, Steve Jean recorded your first single. But by no, then we had recorded no. our single before with another artist, Kasiu Kira, another producer yes. called Tim at Kasiu Kira. We did our stuff, yeah. and then uh, you guys Which recorded an album. Uh, our song was Atoba. Then, yes, yeah, yes, the, yes, we recorded yes, Atoba yes, yes. and Sesetula. Are you on Atoba? Yeah, no. I'm on both really? songs, yeah. Is it? The first song is Atoba, me, Saba Saba, and uh, Momo. Then Sesetula is six months later, me, Saba Saba, Momo, Chaga. That's when everyone else had the joined crew, the, the, the unit. Yeah, the yeah. whole crew was there. Six of us were on uh, Sesetula. But the original, the, the first song was yeah. me, Saba Saba, and, and uh, Momo. What? Yeah, that's 1998. I think I was in, uh, high, I was in uh, my first year at university. That's when we did it. 
<laughs> you see your four, yeah, you see? Yeah. Now imagine when we did a tova, we uh, we we got some radio play on uh piggy on uh what's it uh we we we, we launched that song on what station was that? Uh Sanyu, you know we first went to Power, isn't it call it Power FM? Power FM. The power was gospel. Yeah, but they had us there. Why? Because they felt like yeah, we're teenagers, and you know they had a, teen, a show for teenagers. So they brought they, they, they brought us on there to you know to 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 to, to premiere our song, Atoba. And then they love. I mean, they love the response and yeah. uh, that what the fans gave us. Then six months later, when we recorded Sesetula, it's like uh, what February, January, February '99, we recorded Sesetula, and they called us back and we premiered that. Then went to San, you premiered it, and the rest is history. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I actually didn't know you guys were. I didn't know you were on October. I, I was in October. I, for some reason, I thought I, I kicked the last verse on October. The first verse has Saba Saba and Momo going to go back and, back forth, and forth, and then uh, who comes in? So uh, Saba Saba continues with uh, within four bars. Uh, Momo continues. I mean, and then that's when I come in with a sixteen. Do you remember your verse? No. Uh, October. <laughs> October. Uh, you've been now rocking with the best. Like, oh, no, I can't even remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember I said it over, you are now rocking with the best, but uh, underground, <laughs> it's going on and on. Oh, we just man. talk about ourselves as, you yeah. know, as rappers and stuff. No, as you so, so how, okay, that's crazy. But then your journey is, is crazy. I mean, now now you're recording your 10th album. Yeah, the OG. I mean, the process of, you know, for put, finalizing Finishing the, 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 the 10th, 10th album. Um, started with Live from East Africa. Live from East Africa, yeah. Tell me how how does life from East Africa how does how does that concept come about why why life from East Africa why did you feel like hey let me let me let me let me be this let East me Af- be, yeah. create this East African product uh, or okay whatever. if you remember very well yeah. uh, my album live from East Africa dropped um, in, 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 I think it was uh, two thousand four um, uh, January February January January two thousand four okay. prior to that. I had, I had, I had uh, been invited to the studio by Steve Jean. Remember I told okay, you yes. when, he, when he took down my number, he said he would call me. He mm. called me six months later. Mm-hmm. This is 2003. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was talking about, to, at the end of 2002, he calls me and says he, he's looking for somebody to do a jingle for UTL. Mm-hmm. Mango. You remember Mango, Mango was the thing. Juice up here. Yeah, juice up <laughs> and everything. Yeah, juicing up and everything, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So I did the jingle for that. I wrote and recorded that. Yeah. Um, and it did well. However, I left the country. Okay, yes, so yes. I, you did the UK or something? Yeah, I went to the UK for my yeah. brother's wedding and stayed there for a while. Mm-hmm. When I came back, it was uh, in the middle of, uh, at the start of 2003. Yeah. He called me back. He yelled at me and said, oh, I had you back in town. Where are you at? I'm like, I'm at home in Tinder. He's like, yo, can I come and pick you up? I need you to check out something. I'm like, yeah, please. I directed him. He came, picked me up. We went down to everyone. He's like, listen to this. I'm in the process of recording my, my album, Fever. Yeah. I need you to drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. So like, I need somebody I to, that, I need a rapper on there. I did that. I think they were like trying to channel their Michael Jackson. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like Steve always had that showman thing yeah, on stage. Yeah, you know, he's, he's a performer yeah, and everything. Yeah. He likes some big lights and everything. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he dropped a verse for me on one of my songs. So he played me a bit. I wrote, I wrote a, a 16 by, dropped it immediately. And yeah. he was very, very pleased. He's like, oh, you know what? Come back into the studio next week and let's see what happens. So the following week I went back. Yeah. He played me what we had recorded. It's like, I have a couple of beats So here. that song is what? What song is that? The song is Ain't No Good. How does that, which one does that one go? How does that one go? Uh, it's a love song. I'm talking for the da da cause, cause yeah. I, I'm looking. Like, you think my love ain't no good? Yeah. I'm trying to be. A, you know, you know that little, little popish thing yeah. with the girls. He's talking to the girls. <laughs> so I'm, I'm rapping and talking to this girl about what like, you're taking me for somebody that's no good for you or whatever. Yeah. But guess what? I'm this and that. Blah blah blah. So he played me a couple of other beats and said, "Yo, I need these beats. Uh, I need you to write something to these beats, uh, so we can complete the what the feed the fever album." Yeah. And uh, while we're writing, while we're writing and recording those songs, he played me a beat and said, I "Have this beat. Mm. You think you can mm. kick anything mm. for it?" I was like, "Plays me that." Dun, 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 dun. So while I was in the UK, I was always thinking about, well, guess what? East Africa has this station that's playing East African uh, music. Ogopa is doing well, and I see all these young guys that Ogopa has put together. 
the Gopa DJs, the remember Gopa that? DJs, they had yes, that yes. wave was you know was running yes, on now. Uh, yes, 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 yes. So yes. they're playing uh, the, the whole the, the whole compilation with all these artists: yeah. Red Sun, Nameless, Wahoo, yeah. the late Issa, uh, the late Issa yeah, and then Mr. Yeah. Gugu, Gugu, Mr. 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 Googs and Vinnie Banton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I felt like yeah. I have to represent for Uganda. So yeah. I'm, now I'm listening to all these songs while I'm in the UK. Yeah. So I'm like, let me write some. Let me write something down that represents not only Uganda but the whole of East Africa, because we know East Africans love to party. And guess what? These guys are are, are ruling, but the, the the Kenyans are ruling. I think we're better than them. Let me write something and <laughs> let them know I'm from Uganda. However, I'm I'm, I'm repping, representing I'm Uganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the East Africa Party, I'm I'm shouting out all the all the countries, course, all the yeah, regions, yeah. and everything, and reminding people that day hey, when you come to Af to East Africa, it's a, it's all about a party, man. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah. we do. So I wrote. I when Steve played me the beat. I'm like yeah, I have this song I wrote in the UK about six months ago. I still have my lyrics and whatever. It's like you jump into the booth and let's hear it. So I started rapping to that. It's like, oh, okay. What what we do for the hook? Like, welcome to the East African Friday. You know, like, cause you know, it's welcome to East Africa. I'm introducing myself yeah. on the scene, but at the same time, I'm shouting out the region I'm from. Yeah. So I recorded Rusty's immediately after that. Yeah. Steve Jean drops his job. album and everything. We go on <laughs> tour with him. Yeah. We go on tour and everything. We uh, we 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 we, do, we 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 travel. We tour all these regions and all these schools. We're, we're trying to push Steve Jean's album, but at the same time, I get the chance to showcase my East Africa party and Rusty's. So Steve is like, oh, in the meantime, I have some other songs that we can, we can, we, you know, that you can write to these beats. I have some other beats and some other concepts that he played me the beats. I wrote down some songs, Still the Girl, The Roof. Yeah. Blah, blah. Like, you can have those. I'll put them on my album, but you can have those for your album as well. So he executive produced my first wow. album and I dropped it in early 2004. Let me ask, with this, like, I mean, with, this journey, it, it hit me. It just hit me. Yeah. You've never been signed? No. I was never signed to anyone before. I've just, I've, I've with, always with, been. With this relationship that you have had with, with Steve, Steve, yeah. why didn't you be like, hey? Because Steve was not signing artists. If you realize, was Steve was artist. trying, yeah, yeah, Steve was trying to push himself as an artist. So wait. So, so he so was trying to help us as well develop. That's why he, he, um, he, he, he blessed many of us at that point particular point uh, remember he, he blessed you guys with uh nothing wrong with a little wrong, dope yeah. he blessed uh michael ross with hey senorita yeah, he blessed yeah, yeah. maurice curio so, with and uh steve jen uh, with ben thinking, and Bampos. Yeah. yeah in my head i always thought we were assigned to to everyone I, I well i thought i thought for sure uh michael was michael ross was signed and you know eventually blue three became no i think but blue then, three was the first uh yes, at, but, the but first then, act so, that so steve jen signed asking, i was asking like with all this it feels like lyrical g no, it feels like I know Lyrical G has this brand that is like is good in any hood, basically. Yeah, my you thing know? was my thing was uh, guess what? I'm a rapper. Yeah, uh, hip hop at that point in time was new. You know, like yeah. genre, like commercially, it yeah. was new. Remember, you guys had the first commercial single at that point. You had uh, you had the song with with Juliana. Yeah, remember yeah. all I want to know. So I came in with the East Africa party. So we all bubbled at the same time. Yeah, remember we all nominated. That year, where yes, you won yes, the, yes. the the Palm Awards at the yes, inaugural yes. Palm Awards, where you won Best Act and Best yes. Single. So remember, that's the time my East Africa Party dropped. So remember, yes. we we're, were new when people were trying to embrace hip hop. We're trying to show people that we can we can do something to yeah. to, to build on the genre or the music yeah, on yeah. the music whatever scene in Uganda. Yeah. So I was never signed. I was just an act that was affiliated mm -hmm. to Steve Jin. Uh, so everywhere he went, I had to go. Why? Because I featured on his album, so I had to perform songs. Yeah. So I remember I'm on three songs on his Fever on his, album. On his album yeah. So while I'm on tour with him, I have to perform. I have to open for him and perform my stuff as well, yeah. and then perform well, the stuff I did with him. That's crazy. Okay, I, 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 that's a, probably a question I'd have to ask Steve because mm. I was like, was he trying to be an artist or showcase production? Or he both? was. He was trying to do both. Ah, At the same okay. time, he had plans to set up his own studio yeah. and maybe later on a label. Who knows what happened? Maybe. Um, uh, maybe he would have signed me had mm. I stuck around. But hey, guess what? You grow. From my first album, I got very f popular. You know, I got f popular all, all over, you know, the region, the region all over yeah, East Africa yeah. because of that single. Was, and then, know, you know, the radio station Africa played. Was, yeah, You know, we'll get to that because yeah. it became like a continental thing with Lyrical Definitely. G. So what happens is... Uh, you know, he, 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 he set up his studio after that. But yeah. I also moved on because I had to work with other producers. You know, he yeah. got so busy. He had to set up his studio yeah. and then work on Blue 3 because they were also coming up. Yeah. Remember, we went on tour with Blue 3 as well when they uh, when he put them together. We went to the Steve Jean Blue 3 tour, 2004. Me, oh, Dorothy, okay. no, 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 Dorothy, the Nubian Queen, Mr. Mosh, the late Kefa, 
Uh, I think you're 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 not here. You're, oh, you're still doing yeah, your your, your high school thing. Uh, we we did two man eclipse oh, dancers wow. and then went went on tour to you know because they had to promote because Coca Cola remember Blue Three were a group that was discovered by by Coca Cola. So Coca Cola had to push them. You know the the the, the Anaban group, Anaban mm-hmm. act that they have to push into high school kids and their girls. So you know we had to go to all these schools, but courtesy of Coca Cola, so that blow three, you know, so that their single yeah. can blow. The single frisky. I have a question. I know yeah. I'm getting in trouble for this one. You said Eclipse dancers. Yeah. Was Gareth there? Gareth Eclipse dancers. He was a, he no, was he was in a, a no, he was in a group that was started us? by something as by somebody. That had uh, originally been part of the Eclipse ah, Dancers, yeah. Okay. So when we're doing the Blue Three tour, uh, this 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 person that set up the group where uh, that later on, uh, you know, Bath, <laughs> where Gary the where Gary for his own. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you know. You but guess what? Uh, Julius of uh, Swangs Avenue was the head of Eclipse Dancers. So while we were on tour, Ju- Julius Chazé, he's the one that, uh, that we always went with him. Why Eclipse Dancers were his group, and they were backup dancers for Steve Jean and Blue Three. During the no Steve Jean, yeah, that's how I got to know Julius. And when the Buzz magazine thing started, that's how I performed at all these Buzz magazine, Buzz uh, yeah, cause, cause and all that. Yeah, we had a pro- we had a relationship that started during the Steve Jean Blue Three tour in oh two thousand four. That's exactly now. You see, when we did all that, Benon and Vampus, Michael Ross. They were all performing as well. Oh. So when uh, when Julius when uh, when when Swangs Avenue started, the relationship between Julius and Benon yeah. had, had already been built, courtesy of this whole Steve Jean Blue Three tour thing. We had the that remember we had the Christmas uh, the end of year pa- the end of year tour the concert that was at Lugogo in the stadium Blue Three Steve Jean where well, we all performed we all yeah. we all opened yeah. for him you know so that's that how we all, we all became crazy. we're all in the same camp however yeah. we're not signed to each other to each but we yeah. always we toured together that is that is nuts now yeah. how does lyrical go from one album to, to two, two, albums, to two to two to three, three. three like like on narudi that's the second right the second I'm, one I'm yeah okay yeah. so on narudi i'm back narudi the yes, return yes yes i yeah. get it i get it. i get it. narudi means i'm back i'm back yeah, yeah. but then it's like what inspires you to record that album like also, also, who are you working who was, on? Who was I working with on this album? Okay. What are the singles of this album? Okay. Like, Narudi is my sophomore album. Yeah, Life from East Africa dropped in two thousand four. Executive produced by Steve Jean. Yeah, he handled most of the production. Although yeah. I had some production as well done by oh, uh, Uncle Deno from uh, yes, No yes, End. Yes, 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 and that's yes, the time yes. we're working on the No End. At No End, the project came up. The 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 the, the, the what's it? Walter Reed? Was not not the Walter Reed? What they call him? Where we did the Mother Africa, something, the something Z, something G Z Z G T Z G T Z, yeah, yes, G T Z. Because I always that is uh, that is the second album. We oh, worked, okay, the the okay, first yes. one is where they discovered all the other acts. Look at all the acts that we uh, we featured with on the album. Navi was on that album. Remember, yeah. Yeah, that's the time you were absent. You know, you, you yes, were yes, the country. Yeah. So remember, everyone, uh, ladies like G N L. Uh, oh, wow. Easy Text. Oh wow! A lethal, rugged. Oh, wow. What? Uh, but was it MSB and Young Nick? Saint C A. We were all on that album. That's when they all came out because they're also yeah. trying to bubble they quietly. Were and then this platform. So there is a platform. They want hip hop acts to, yeah. to feature on a compilation album, whatever to to help. You know, it's a it's a, it's a conscious album. So it has themes of uh, poverty, education, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, 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 AIDS. Africa Mother Africa, two thousand five. That's what the one we won for uh, best best hip hop single at the Palm Awards 2005. Oh, Mother Africa. With Cute Kaye and uh, yes. Young Nick and yes. okay, It's so okay, hard okay. in this world, I believe in it. Yes. That's the album yes, yes, we recorded yes. for. Where, were you, where did you guys shoot that video? We shot that video at uh, the basketball court down at, uh, what they used to call it, Bush Court? Yeah, down Bush, Bush Court, Bush 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 yeah, near Pandomera. Yes, yes, so yes, Pandomera, yes, yes, right yes, now, there's Bush Court somewhere it, down yeah. there. Yeah, Damn so man. we shot the video there. So, so yes, the so, so, so during that time, yeah. we're working on, uh, on on the GTZ album or the compilation album yeah. with all these new hip hop acts. Yeah. I got the chance to work with AD of Good Enough. Why? I went to school with AD. So the time I was recording with Steve, AD had gone to study production in Manchester. Uh, okay. He came okay. back and then started his group Ngoni, Ngoni together with Pato. So they needed acts to build their label. Yes. And guess what? 
since we had all worked with Steve Jean and we're all hip hop R and B, yeah, you know, we're all hip hop R and B centered and all that. Yeah. He called us to come and help him. We recorded the Welcome to Kampala City, yes. May, Papito. Papito. Yes, yes, Benon yes, and yes. Vampus, Michael Ross, yes. Saba Saba, Chaga. This is when Chaga was still rapping. Yeah. yeah uh, who else was Chaga. There? They're all there, man. <laughs> we, uh, we all recorded and, you know, and with Ngoni as well. Yes. So I had the chance to, you know, to to, 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 to hang out at the studio with AD and uh, I think Ngoni. Yeah. So we recorded Ngoni, my yeah. first single, uh, Narudi. Narudi. Yes. Because I had this thing. Since uh, two years ago, I dropped my debut album, that's 2004. So this is 2005 going into six. Mm -hmm. I need to, to record new to, stuff. Yeah. So Steve was busy at that point yeah. working on Blue Three's debut album. Yes, yes, so yes. there was very little time between, uh, between yeah. then for me to go to the studio and then record something fresh with him. So what I did is I recorded with AD, yeah. my first single for the sophomore album. Now Rudy Not had really. songs like Hey You, Yes. Hey, you is uh, one, I want best hip hop single for that man. in 2006. And I had yeah. songs like uh, How We Get Down. Yeah. I had songs like Out of War with Babaluku. Yeah. And, and so many other songs. That, that was, I, people say Life from East Africa is my biggest album, but I, I have a feeling. Uh, Narudi. My Narudi, because I broke that song for more jinx. Most times when people record their second album, they don't have, they still, they don't have the same yeah, yeah. passion and the same, you know, like energy yeah. that they, they put into their first the project. First but my second album, I had more creative, you know, and, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, more creative yeah. freedom. I had to, all, yeah. I had to go up to GK Studio. He gave me the studio Come and told on. me just record as much as you can. So I worked with the twins. Yeah, yeah R.I.P. Yeah, yeah. to to uh, to to Michael. Uh, yes, R.I.P. So. Yo, you know, so, so that's crazy. So on Narudi, you're saying, "Hey, I'm back. I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, um, I'm still here. I've never left. I, I'm here." I wanted to say, you said when you said out of war with Babalu. Yeah. How did you manage to stay out of the beefs? How, how did I? Stay? I don't know cause because Babaluku, at that time, yeah, at that time, yeah, the beef was bro. creeping up. Of course, hip hop acts are coming up. Some everyone was, says I'm better than you. I'm yeah, better. So yeah, people yeah, had yeah, static. No, but at that time, it yeah. was like. People Babaluku came back. Like, people came back. Yeah, people came back from abroad. Babaluku had been away for a very long time. Yes. But remember, he was part of Bataka. He represented yes. Bataka while he was away. Now, yes. when I joined, uh, when I when I joined Steve Jin, yeah, uh, Steve Jin's camp to you know to work on his projects and to work on my solo stuff. He probably. I I him. was um <laughs> I I'd left Bataka. I was yes. now working on myself as a solo artist. Well, yes. Steve wanted to build me as a solo and, uh, act. Yes, yes. That's how I was able to record stuff, you know, my, by myself. Now Babaluku returns, of course. Then when he was there, he was talking about no, I, I need to come back to Uganda, and then you know, and uh, and, and, and introduce Luga Flow to Uganda. I need people to rap in uh, in their native languages, blah mm. blah blah. Everyone rapping in English, nah nah nah. But remember, we didn't rap in Luganda back then. It was just a few. Yeah, we were trying to rap in Luganda, but it never sounded the what like like it does now because the yeah. styles have changed and the genre keeps growing. Yeah, yeah. So of course, Baba Baba recorded a lot of Luganda songs. So he 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 dissed us. He did some of us, yeah. He, he, tried, he, quite, he didn't diss us out of hatred or whatever. No, I think he was trying to build his his name as well as a yeah. solo artist because he had to come back home. So yeah. when you're coming back home, you have to take on the people who are who on top are, at that particular time. Clear Cut were on top at that time, Fine. you know, were on top. And then he, you know, he, he, aimed, he took aim at all of us, okay. remember? He even did Steve Jean, you know? <laughs> so so you can imagine. But when he came back, you know, we sorted all this shit that we talked, we sat and talked, all this shit was yeah. squashed. And then he ended up working with Steve. He worked with Benon and Vampus. And then he showed up at the studio while I was recording uh, Narudi. So I'm like, yo, dude, I have this song. Why don't you jump on it? Then you're Bataka. And I'm Bataka, you know that we're so yeah, love. Yeah. So we jumped on the Art of War. We yeah. got nominated for a Palm Award at uh, 2007. Yeah. For Palm Award. Was it the one that Obsessions won? <laughs> no, the one that Obsessions won was the 2004. Where, <laughs> where I was nominated <laughs> where I got alongside them and uh, my song, you know, East Africa Party was supposed to, to, yes. to win. Everyone knew that, but, you know, they gave it to an R&B act. I guess that by then, the Palmer Awards didn't, no. know, didn't really know what the genre they was knew. about. Or, or even then, it was politics, man. It was politics yeah, as exactly. usual, you know, so, you know, there was some politics involved. I, yeah. I guess they made amends because the following year, I won. I managed to yeah. win with the Hip Hop All Stars and I won my first uh, Best Hip Hop so, Act, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, award. And then, back, then the, 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 the following year, of course, I won back to back. Yeah. So, you know, but we did the Art of War. We squashed it with butter. I stayed out of the beef. I was yeah, like, I was never one to like, beef with like anyone. How come, how come you did that? You know, when if, if, if we're talking about it, your first, you said your first lines on Atoba were, no, you're now you're rocking, now rocking the with the best. Yeah, you, you know, know like, everyone. You know, when you're like, representing, yeah, you're, 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 so, so, everyone so, says so, you're the best. Exactly. So yeah. it's such a hip hop thing. Yeah. So in my head, I'm like, mm, how? Like I'm, 
I've always said that. Like, I've yeah. always talked to you about that. And I'm like, yo, because when we had issues with urban life, mm. you were just like, yeah, but I scratched it because urban life <laughs> did not did not know you guys well. I knew you because we live around the yeah, corner, yeah, yeah. you know, from from each other. Yeah. And I knew you, and we hang out, blah blah blah. We, you know, Navi and them were in the basement and everything. <laughs> and when the uh, when uh, when this boys of mine uh, the urban life when they came into the picture yeah. they, they were not close to you so they felt like they were better than you yeah. like they're just like we say anyone feels they're better than the other person so they, they tried to beef with you guys to build clout for themselves which was a short lived beef because yeah. when we squashed it we all became very the close cipher. and formed the cipher <laughs> clear cut and urban life together yeah. and we've been best of friends forever yeah. you know so it was just a, it was just I who is better than who I want better than you or who's, who's I feel like I feel like the cipher yeah if we had no if, they, if people Fair. hadn't gone to study you remember you left and went to study yeah. Navio went went to study, went to study and then members of, of, uh, yeah, of, uh, of Urban Life also went to oh, study with Ryonga and them and they were like I'm just saying you're doing an album called the OG yeah so the I feel like yeah I feel like yeah, I talked to I talked to Ewise because you know he's back in town glad he's to have back, you back Ewise yeah so Ewise you know, much love and respect to Ewise is a, is a member of uh, Urban Life yeah I talked to him when we had this uh, when we had this get together uh, a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and we talked about oh, guess what? We need to do a cipher project. When we sit down and uh, and meet up, we meet up and when we meet up and sit down and talk to everyone involved in the cipher, we can work on something. Yeah. We can work on something because now we have uh, we have the time and we have we the have resources. The <laughs> we have the resources and studios. You we know? Have the Back studios. then it was yeah, who's yeah, recording us? That will that will give us a chance. That will give you guys a chance. Yeah. Remember, and that's how we met and then squash the beef and form the cipher. Form the cipher. And that's how we managed to feature on your sophomore album. Remember What's, that? Yes, album. The, the sophomore cipher. So, yeah. so third album. Yeah. What's the third album? The third album. Uh, first and foremost. Yeah, that was that this was. This is that first was and foremost for uh, volume one. Which one had spit? Twist that spit. No, no, I, I spit. I spit. I spit. I spit. That's uh, that's and uh, simple cl- and plain. Okay, this is like what album number five, man. That's okay. what. Because that's what <laughs> I was oh, talking about. Oh, that's your shit. Yeah, you always, you always love that. Um, let's see. Um, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, my third album, First, First and Flow Most, two thousand seven. What I remember about First and Flow Most, um, because I was listening to you, like I like to listen to people's shit before I, I talk to them. What, what I remember about First and Flow Most was, yeah. you had. The, not even a cipher. You had that song with like guys you were grooming. Grooming is that the, re- that, the word? No, that is uh, simple and plain. Well, that's the f- simple and plain was the first album where you did that. Simple and plain, and uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it was wait, on wait, first that, and foremost. You had no the GMC project. That's no, when no. I worked with you guys on uh, walking in the rain, and then the cipher one. Boom, 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 boom. Do, 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 do. I'm tipping the scales like a Libra. Remember your verse? Yeah. Do you remember that? I'm tipping the scale. Just call me the nicest. <laughs> nicest. Since was a crisis. I, I, <laughs> I remember Yo, your verse like that. Yeah, it was dope, man. It was dope when we came, when we came to that. Huh? Yeah. yeah um, no, I was saying, like, when not not working on. Oh, not with us guys. Uh, with uh, with the chaps, I was like. The guys, that, when you start introducing. When I. I to the rugged. To, to, that to, was, yeah, that was. Uh, that was uh, the ciphers I did. I we we, we don't we no. did we, yeah with the ciphers I always introduce people. Remember, yes, in two thousand seven no, no, no. when I did leave the ciphers. Of, leave uh, the ciphers. I'm saying, like the songs where you had. Okay, had, who, who yeah. I, introdu- I introduced Rocky Giant on uh, First and Foremost one. Yeah, yes. like a game to tam- yes, that, yes. That's two thousand seven. Okay. okay, so I introduced Rocky Giant to that. He went on to win a uh, best hip hop act. Yeah, that's him. Because yeah. he, he he was unstoppable yeah. with that with with his joint. Yeah. No, but then you also had. Uh, the what you had you had rugged on there no the w- no I didn't have rugged on there I had Which I had Vampus rugged? on yeah. there I had uh, I had I worked with Sam Lamara on that album okay nice. yeah I worked Ruta. with Sam Lamara but uh, I think at Ruta Records uh, so that must have had no hits oh no you had it had uh, we had that song with uh, with uh, what's it that song with uh, that song with uh, with Rocky Giant. Yes, yeah, that's yes. the one we performed all through the year, yeah. and uh, he was able to win Best Hip Hop Act yeah. that year. We had uh, we had we had a couple of songs on there. We had uh, uh, So Real. Uh, some yes, some produced yes. that. It was dope. I had uh, nothing like hip hop music, yes, the basketball yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then I had songs like Tear It Up. Yeah. We had songs like uh, I've been I've been crying I've been hurting the tribute to my mom because you know I always yes. do a tribute to my yes. mom. So we had we had we had a couple of songs. Although that time. Um, 
Luga flow is now coming into the picture. So yeah. I wouldn't I won't say life from uh, life from East Africa and uh, Narudi were major hits cause because those songs because had like, yeah. yeah they were there man there, no, no, not so many people release albums and people release singles but yeah. I had like a whole bunch of songs you know like a, to, for albums yeah. so that's why I had so many hits when I when um the time I did uh, Fast and Flomos Volume One. Uh, Luganda was coming in the Luga Flow movement because yeah. you know Babaluku is back, he's settled and everything. Yeah, so that, that, yeah, Bavubuka. yeah Bavuka and then Rocky Giant is doing Luganda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when I had people rapping in Luganda and everything. They came onto the album and stuff like that. We worked on that. And then, of course, that's the time I think you came back as well. No, uh, I came two, back on 2000. You came back, no, you came back home. When did you come back home? 2008? Yeah, yeah, yeah 2008, that, yes. the following year. Remember, that's when we started working on uh, the GMC project, which yeah, I yes, released yes. in 2009. And that's where you featured on two songs. Navio yes. was on there, two songs. That's the one where I had everyone. That's yes, the one I introduced yes, everyone yes, yes, for yes, yes. the GMC project. Yes. That's 2009. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, so, okay, so you have you have all these albums. For me, me, you know how I, I, yeah, I have with my albums. Yeah. I mean, I have three. I yeah. do have mixtapes. I do yeah. have clear cut stuff yeah. or whatever. But I do have three albums. Three, so, three solo albums. So it's like, what what is it that you do? What what is it that you go through for you to be like, okay, time to release? Because when when you're talking about Narudi, yeah. you said then I realized it was time to release. Yeah, but you I, know, like for me, sometimes like, okay, I mean, yeah, I, I always give myself release, one then, year, one year, one year and a half to release an album. Yeah. Like every uh, in between an album. You know, there's always some other music that drops. People that come drops, a yeah. compilation yeah. for features and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So while you're doing that, you get an idea yeah. for a project. So you record a single. Which which single will uh, dictate what your next album will, what Ooh. direction you're taking, or mm. what what title you're going to give the album, or what the uh -huh. climate is with yeah. regards uh, with hip hop and everything at that yeah. particular moment. So you know, I do, I mean, to 2007 to 2009, Swangs Avenue came up. I recorded uh, my single, uh, the first single, Back At It Again. Yes. That's when I realized that this album, Back At It Again, should should uh, she should 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 what should pay should make she should actually determine what my next album, which is my fourth album, what it should sound like or what it should be like. So I decided I was going to record a double CD. Why? There were so many acts that had come up. Yeah. And I felt like I needed to record with each one of those acts yes. so that I can have an album that had everyone on it. Yeah. That's when the yeah. Ruggeds came in. That's yeah. when uh, uh, Unique, Lethal, yeah. and yeah. everyone that I'd worked with, GNL, The Game yeah. Needs Me, yeah. uh, had songs like what, Them Can't Stop We, Them Can't yeah. Stop We with Rubber Dabba. Yeah, yeah. Then, uh, you know, there's so many songs on there. Yeah. I, worked at, I worked at GK Studio. I, I recorded my album. I worked with GK for some time, so I recorded my album. So many GK. songs, so many songs. I could GK because how, how important he was yeah. for all of us to yeah. sing. Hey, third floor. Yeah, remember when we were, when we were all recording <laughs> at that time? You remember yeah. you guys would come in yeah. while I was, uh, you know, I'd been recording my album. You guys come in, you had the session as yeah. well. Then, uh, I, later I, on, yeah. GNL came in and recorded. Yeah. And literally, it's what? like the studio is open. Yeah, it's always open. There's yeah. electricity. Yeah. You're full. You're full. Everyone is there, and everyone. <laughs> You're full if you're not recording. Yeah, there's there's so much. There's so yeah. much to to talk about at that time, and so much to do. If if if, if you had to talk about your best moments in in the in, in the game, in, in hip hop, yeah. in Ugandan hip hop, yeah. in hip hop, what 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 is what are your top three moments for you when you're like, yo, okay, these these are so they defined who lyrical G is now. Like, which are those three top top moments? Wow, my best moments in hip hop, winning awards, of course. The time, every time I was yeah. um, I was nominated and I won, I yeah. standing up on that uh, you know that pedestal, the platform, and then thanking everyone. Yeah. Those are moments that you can't forget. Like when I achieved my, um, when, when I won the Lifetime Achievement Lifetime Award at uh, the, the 2020 MTN Hip Hop Awards, I never expected them to, yeah. to, you know, to, 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 you know, to give it to me. I didn't know. I thought maybe it was too early for me, but they yeah. felt it was, I, I guess, because the right of time. the work I, I put the, in and yeah. everything, the right time. Do you, like, like something like that, like Lifetime Achievement Award, the record G, and, you, and you're standing up there and remember, everyone, we all, everyone just stood up like yeah. brand managers, artists. Yeah, like everyone, everyone, everyone just and no one is trying to tell the other guy stand up. Stand up like, yeah, just everyone just stood up and clubbed. Yeah, How do you I guess feel? yeah, I, that's uh, I mean that was I was so humbled. I never, you know, I felt like okay because I was they, they called me up a few weeks to uh, to, to the awards show yeah. and told me, guess what, you you our recipient for 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 this year's award. Like what? Like yeah, you're the recipient. I'm like okay, um, 
what do I need what do to I do? do? <laughs> uh, no, just prepare a speech and uh, send us your uh, whatever. Most of what, what what we need, we've got, we've, we already have. But send us some of the stuff that you might want us to include in your in your short clip. There was a short clip they played. Yes. You know, it's me being up there and then uh, you know we're watch, everyone is watching the screen. Yeah. And, uh, and they're showing the clip from where I, my journey, and then we have all these people talking about me. You had GNL, you had Dawu, some of the people yeah, that had yeah. been there since I, uh, you know, by, since I started rapping, they've seen my journey and everything, and they were up there talking about me and everything. And then, and then me, uh, and then them handing it over to me, and everyone st- standing up and clapping after yeah. the, uh, the, you know, the clip had been played. Yeah, that was a, that was a good feeling. I don't know. I sometimes sometimes you feel like you done it all or whatever but that day i noticed yeah and i noticed and realized that hey i think i've done it all now i this yeah. is it I can, i'm now free to do whatever i want to do nice. without having to be criticized or without having to worry about what anyone might think nice. yeah because everyone stood up and acknowledged me and let's say you know, like we need two more <laughs> two more ah uh, two more we, uh, winning winning uh, winning my first power award I was lost for words. I I started on stage while I was uh, in my, in my accept, uh, during my acceptance speech. I started because I because I was up against some heavy heavy yeah, yeah. some heavy weights, man. Yeah. I had Navio uh, with yeah. Brackers, Brackers, man. That was the MTV best. I played that song like the whole year, <laughs> and then for for, for me to win year. the best hip hop act, and yet Navio had been on on you know on uh, MTV best. Yeah. Oh man, that was that was that was crazy. I was up against Navio Saba Saba. And then uh, I don't quite remember who, who it was. Saba Saba had two Jababia, and this song was yes, heavy. Yes, Jababia. Navio had rockers single. with Peter yeah, Miles, then, and yeah, then you know yeah. me and me with my Narudi. Yes. And then you know it was it was nice. And then Rocky Giant was on there. Yeah. So you know I, me winning that award, man, that was something else. I got up there and received the award, uh, and uh, I could, uh, it was uh, heavy, uh, man. It was like uh, the plaque was quite heavy. I, I held it and I was I was trying to speak, and you know I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't hold I couldn't hold it the way I wanted to. I, I had to speak and balance it, and yeah. I started, but I thanked everyone. I said, "Yo, this is hip hop, man. You listen to us. We have a voice." And I walked away in less than less than what, ten seconds. I was done, and, and everyone was taking pictures of me backstage, and I didn't know what to do because I had this heavy thing in my arm, so heavy glass, Where and I'm it? holding. I have them at home, man. Yeah, I, have, I have four of those at home up there together with, uh, with what, the hip hop, uh, with the Lifetime Achievement Award. Yeah, yeah. And the one we want for cause and effect production for Atamukute. He's oh, out there. Cause yeah. hasn't come to, to pick his award. Yeah, of right. course, come and pick your award, man. <laughs> Otherwise, I might go and scrap your name <laughs> off it and just put Atamukute on it. <laughs> you know? Take his award. So, yeah, it's one of those moments. What's man. the third? The third. Us being able to to have you can look no, at us now. No, yeah, exactly. No look at me. us, man. Look at us. This this moment. Look at this, man. Remember back then. Remember in the basement where we say. Remember you had the song the I did for my next year. I used to love to collect tapes and CDs yeah. and uh, magazines. We used to change, exchange, yeah. and change things. Because it was first. it was it was three rooms. Right? Was three rooms. Exactly. <laughs> So my room. bedroom, yes, right in the middle, there the was the basement, yeah, and then the other yeah, section yeah. was, you know, yeah. we were hanging so many of us, and God we all, damn, it was so, uh, many. so many of my peers, and me, me so being many. able to link up with all of you again. Look and at, teach. look at this. You have your own podcast, and we talk yeah. about this moment. Yeah. I, I I meet Rionga every now and then, and I remember the day. I always remind him the day I first met him when Wardstone brought him to the basement. I talked about, yo, this who, is an MC. And who brought him? Wardstone. Yes. They went to school piece. together. Yes, yes. So Wardstone brought Rionga one day. Yo, LG, this is this is too crooked. I'm yeah. like, oh, too crooked. What, what does he do? He's a rapper. <laughs> we are, a, oh, man, the guy is too dope. I'm like, oh, yeah. You know what we do here, man? When you come into the basement, the first thing you do, you have to kick a 16. We, we, we have the MC of the day. If you if you make it to MC of the day, then we'll recruit you. And <laughs> Rionga kicked our ass that day, and you know. <laughs> so I always remind him. Remember the first day you came to the basement and yeah, you kicked I, our ass, and we recruited you into the, the oven. Verse? Like, what was the verse? Uh, what does he say? The crookedest bones like syphilis. My specialist, let them get the feel of that. I can't even remember. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh man, the yeah. crookedest bones like syphilis. I was like, all right, so <laughs> you're the you're the MC of the day. And, oh, you're <laughs> satisfied, man. So he became he became one of. Uh, yeah. urban life and the basement crew yeah so that, those moments me being able to come like 
I sit with Navio and I remind him, like every time I bump to him, I always remind him. Yeah. Remember the days we were, were struggling down there at DV8, man. I remember when I was at DV8 with what? Pataka. <laughs> we were performing, right? And I saw Langman. He ran, he was at the gate. I think he, when he had me first, when he my raps, he ran down to see who was. Remember when you walked yes, through at DV8? You would actually see this. Yeah, you'd actually yeah. see this. The, yeah. the person on stage yeah. facing the audience. Yeah. So I, while I'm running around, I see the guy running down. He wants to see who this MC is kicking that shit. Yeah. So me, you and Langman had to be in there, yeah, be in there, yeah, be being able to see what, what Langman is doing now. I saw him on stage with Dusty Fix, yes. one of the groups I grew up listening, listening to and admiring. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like yeah, those moments, man, those are. Yeah, seeing everyone very, growth, very. Basically. Everyone has grown. We're we're, we're not yeah. kids anymore. But I, I remember what twenty years ago we were yeah. kids and look at what we've look done. Now, now, that's crazy. Okay, and what are the worst moments? The three top worst moments. <sighs> the worst moments. Yeah, I remember when I when my single, when my first single, East Africa Party, had just dropped. Yeah, uh, I took it. I took the seed when Steve called me up and said, "Oh, guess what? Here's the CD. Go. Here's your song." <laughs> and he gave me a 10k, and he said, "Go to Silk and kick their ass." You know, it was a yeah. Tuesday, and yeah. we had to go to Silk. Now, guess what? On Tuesdays, we used to go and rap. Yes. So, when, once he gave me my CD, and, and he gave me a 10K together with the CD, and said, go and kick their ass in Silk. Because yeah. he knew I love to hang out in Silk on Tuesdays. Yes. Yeah. Everyone So, in you know, Uganda he gave me the CD. I went uses. down. Yeah, I went down. I went home. I got my uh, disc, man. Played, uh, placed the CD in there, and then pressed play, and then put the headset to my mom's ears. My mom listened to the song. Oh, and she was so happy. And she was like, yo. And she gave me another 10K at that particular moment. I remember we needed a service fee. Uh, my oh MTN, my yeah, they cut me off. I didn't have service fee on my phone. It's like, you go and load service fee on your phone yeah. so you can be able to receive or make calls or whatever. Yeah. So two weeks later, my mom passed away. Yeah. So, you know, that was a very sad moment because she listened to my first single, East Africa Party, but she never... So she was never. Yeah. She was not around to see the rest of the journey. My, my, my what happened later after East Africa Party, me recording, um, uh, whatever, the recording the the, the the debut album Rosties and all those songs. So then I recorded. I'd written a song for her to appreciate her, and yeah. then I had to change it, it was, what, to pay tribute to her, you know, because she had passed on. So I changed the whole song. Uh, my first song, Mama's Song. Yeah. I've been thinking about yeah. you yeah. all night long. You know what's you know, crazy about that? You no, know, so it was a very sad moment. I'll you know, forget like, that time. So how was it around? You call yeah, me. Yeah. You call me and you're like, yo. I'm like, yo, lyrical. What's up? What's up? Yeah. Yo, Damn. Yo, mama's gone. Yeah. Mom is dead. Mama's gone. I'm like, huh? Mom is gone. And you hang up. Yeah. You know, and I just remember like, yo, I have to get back into town. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, I have to fucking live life, but I have to get back into town because my guy, and I remember when I, when I found you in Silk, <laughs> Yeah, your oh, corner. the corner, yeah, I the corner, like you, like, like, <laughs> but then in my head, I was just like, yo, that was hectic. That was hectic. How how do you feel like w- with with what you're doing and everything? Do you feel like yeah, she's got to be proud of what you're doing? Because I feel I feel like yeah, yeah, I feel like every time I every time every success I had, every bit of success I've had with myself or in my career, yeah, as an artist. It's because of my mom. My mom's always encouraged me. You go, you go to Silk. My dad never knew I used to break out of the house <laughs> on Tuesday nights to go to break out of the house on Fridays to go to DVA to rap. Yeah, you know. So, but my mom always encouraged me. And she gave me that. You know, you, yeah, I, don't yeah, yeah. I don't have any money. I don't have any money to go to the club. So you go because she knew I was going there because I wanted to rap to showcase. But yeah. you see, she's not been around all these years. All these years you know, it's been what? It's been it's been uh, eighteen years. This past September, she made 18 years, and you it know. September, so it's been, yeah. uh, it's been, yeah, September 13th. That's like yeah, my worst no, day. Because, you know, uh, like, my, my birthday is September 8th. Yeah, definitely. So in my head, even when, when I got the call, in my head I thought, hey, my guy is calling me to wish me a happy so, birthday because yeah. he missed it. It's one of those Then you're yeah, saying that, and it's moments, just like, man. fuck. And obviously now for me, the only time I'm coming back is the next year. Yeah. The next year in March. In March. Which is my birthday. Yes, you know what I'm that. saying? So it's like, yeah. I'm just like, damn, I have to chill. And somehow just, you know. But anyway, two, two, two other moments that, you, that just, when you think about it, you're like, damn, we could have done this better. Like, no, I feel have. like every time, every time we got, we got shitted on, man. But yeah, but all these other guys, like, the, the, guys media. Put us, the media was shitting on us. And then you have this, uh, like the public, every time they, they wrote these bad things about us. But the, I don't know, they, they were trying to, 
I guess we're trying to to to, to whatever to, to to make news and sell sell you yeah. know sell sell news or whatever. But they were damaging us. We, we stayed strong, but those moments are not nice because yeah. the times you know, when the they write the about you and there's nothing you did and they yeah. just write you know, to, you know to that shit. Like for me, I always I always so I felt like I was always like you guys are punks, right? Yeah, because we were never we were never uh, like when they talk about the big three. Yeah. We know how how times were with the big three. When they were at loggerheads, yeah. when they weren't working together, they were fighting every day, every day, every day. A story here, a story there. But when they would write about hip-hop, bro, it would be t- ripping people down, you know. Yeah. And I never understood that. I was like, but we, we're really not doing anything. <laughs> there were moments when we would like get active, but then we were really not doing anything, especially in the public eye. That's the thing, man. We never, we just wanted to, to represent. We're kids and we're coming up. The kids, you know, say, we don't like, we didn't have any, we didn't have any money. We, yeah. well, we just loved rap. We didn't want to make any money. We thought the money would come later on. Yeah. Most people, most people did, they did it for a short time and, you know, they, 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 they went to a different routes yeah, or whatever. Yeah. We stayed there and maintained. So yeah. every time guys tried to put us down, they never paid us. So many times we performed and no one paid us. So we yeah. had to walk. We had to walk back home or whatever. Those moments, yeah. you know, no one wants to, to remember. No one, wants to, no, one should be, yeah, no one should be like that. <laughs> third. Uh, third. third. Uh, I feel like sometimes some of the albums I recorded, yeah. I didn't record them well. Why? We never had proper resources and we didn't have uh, the, you know money and stuff to go to to, to know these to these big studios to record live from east africa was recorded by steve jean in a very very dope studio so it was yeah. well engineered then after that uh some songs went to, to you know you could because you're limited by funds and resources yeah, yeah. you have to settle for for, for a small you know a small home studio to record your yeah. stuff you still represent and can write Good music or whatever, but I felt but like the quality was yeah, it should best, have the quality was not the pace. We should have yeah. done, we should have done, you know, more and better than than, than actually what, what what came out or what we released. Yeah. So I feel yeah. those three moments, you know, for me, yeah. those are like um, you had you have moments like with you when when you're talking about when when we were talking earlier, I said continental. You have moments like you working with Proverb. Yeah. You know, ah, two thousand four. Yeah. Of my favorite. MCs, yeah, 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 right? yeah. yeah. So how how does how does that come about? What was that experience like? Uh, well, while uh, while well, while my music was blowing up, live from East Africa is uh, is already out and yeah, yeah. songs songs are you know, actually the album hadn't yet come out, but I so oh, just I'd recorded no, I recorded yeah, I recorded enough singles, enough songs to make an album, but yeah. I hadn't yet put it together. However, I had the collection of songs and how I, so I wanted it to be. So while 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 uh, while we were performing on stage and everything, we got a call. Yeah. Uh, they, they were looking for some, some some people from South Africa were looking for an act from Uganda, a hip hop act to work with uh, a South African hip hop act on a TV show. It's a documentary to inspire young people to live positive lives and stay yeah. out of trouble, blah blah, avoid yeah. illnesses and stuff like that. Yeah. Drugs, stay away from drugs, blah blah blah. So they um, they interviewed a couple of us. There were so many names. I don't want to mention uh, but these other acts, Uganda, but there were so like many two. of them. Yeah? Like two. Okay, there was Michael Ross, there was... Uh, they said hip-hop yeah, You know, they, they were looking for an urban act. Oh, I guess when they say okay, hip-hop, okay. I guess it just, you know, the it's whole... The they're there. like, yeah, they brought Michael Ross, Benon and Vampos, yeah. brought me and uh, one other guy, I don't quite remember his name, I think it was a dancehall artist. Yeah. So Too they interviewed much. all of us. No, no, no. One other well, guy, I think it was called Lemmy. Lemmy. Some Lemmy MC. Lemmy Cool or some Lemmy Cool. Uh. Some guy called Lemmy Cool. Yeah. yeah. So they, um, they interviewed the five of us. I, well, I, I thought, well, it might take somebody else because, you know, these other guys were in the spotlight more than I was. My yeah. girl, Senorita was very, My very big at that time as well. Yeah. So I felt like, yeah, maybe he might be the one they'll consider. But I got a call two weeks later and they said I'd gone through the, 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 what the people had, um, had what they accepted my uh, my interview was, was was better than all these other guys and yeah. I was the one they chose so they took me to South they, 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 took, they called me up and told me they're bringing their act here t- for a week so we can record clips for my where I live what I do how I spend my uh, my life and my, my how I spend my day and what I do with my friends blah 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 but at the same time before I forget they wanted somebody who had gone through a sad moment in their life, and remember, my mom had just passed on. So when when they interviewed me, I guess they felt like yeah, that was 
the most suitable candidate. Yeah. So okay. I was the one they considered because I just lost my mom. Okay. And then Proverb had also just, so he was living with his grandmom. He had just lost his mom or something mom. like that. Yes, so yes. what they did is, uh, our, stories, our stories yeah, connected. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're both rappers and we're both young, uh, the same age almost. So like, okay, you know what? This is the guy we're looking for. So they brought Proverb down. We did what we did. We recorded and did what we had. This documentary we went to DVA. We performed. Navio was there. We, documentary features Navio and. Uh, Where I is remember, this documentary? I have the documentary, but it's on VHS. That's the uh, funny thing. They didn't send it down. Or oh, you have a deck? <laughs> ah, <laughs> right. Maybe, yeah, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll bring it over and then we can play it and watch it. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> or try to convert it, you know. Try to convert it yeah. into um, digital or whatever. Yeah. So you know, that's how I managed to. You know, when we recorded here, I had to go to Johannesburg. To yes. meet his parents, actually to meet his family. Oh, I had to fly to Johannesburg. They flew yeah. me out there, all expenses paid for, blah, blah, blah. Then we had to travel to Kimberley, where he's, where uh, where he's, he's originally yeah. from. Went down there and filmed. I visited his school teacher, his old school teacher. I, I visited his old school. Then we went and visited uh, other schools and performed for these kids. We wrote, we had to write a song and uh, record it, which is yeah. part of the project. Where is that song? Uh, they have it. They own the rights. They sent me a CD of the song. I couldn't use it for my album. Why? Because it was strictly for that documentary. Uh, yeah, so it, it was never... I did something similar to it uh, called Life. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Life, yes, yes. I, uh, I, I incorporated most of what I had done. It was about yeah. life and uh, the, life of a, the life of a teenager. Yeah. You know, encouraging youngsters to stay out of trouble and to live positive lives. So yeah. I, I tried to I tried to re record for my sophomore album. I did something yes. similar to life. I actually called it life. life but yeah, I yeah. couldn't use the, because I didn't have the rights to the original. The original so I did okay. my own version. But that's how I managed to record with Proverb. You know, <laughs> later on he became big. They were looking at us. Yeah. They wanted to see what would happen to us in the next five years. So yeah. next five years, Proverb was a very big uh, yeah. whatever uh, brand uh, brand in South Africa. By then, I'd already won these awards and I'd moved on. I was recording my fourth album. So yeah. you can imagine how how far we came. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, I mean, your, your journey is hectic. Eh? Yeah, it's but, crazy. But, but now here we are. You're on the the OG, the OG tenth album. Yeah. Produced 100% by you? No. I have, um, I, I've worked with uh, Pro Knowledge on yes. three songs. Okay. I worked with Ness Avatar on one song. Yeah. I worked with Mio Med on yeah. one song. Nice. Nice. Yeah. We actually did, um, see what, for, for this year's Hip Hop Awards, remember we did a cypher together with Navio and Babaluku. Yes, 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 yes. I've, yes, yes. Uh, I've, I've cut it down to my verses, uh, Navio's verse and Babaluku's. I want to use it as an interlude for my, uh, for my OG album. So, uh -huh. so then I'll say I worked at least with Babaluku and Navi on the same, the same thing. Record. Yeah, we'll have it because it's about three minutes. Each yes. one of us kicked a 16. It's the legend cipher, the legendary yeah, yeah, yeah. cipher. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it's a good thing, you know, Mio, Mio produced that. Yes, Mio. So we're still good. working, like I said, we're still, I haven't yet finished the album, so I'm yeah. still working on different projects. Who knows who I'm going to work oh, with. Great. We might I have like, to record some, well, some together. You, I feel like I feel like the OG album you should have you yeah, artists of that caliber. Of that caliber, need, like um, artists who have been there and uh, yeah. who have, whose journey is similar to mine, it's, you know. But then also I feel like Lyrical G brand... Ah, man, this we'll talk about this. Yeah, later. we'll talk about that. You know, we'll talk about yeah. This later. But I just feel like I want to. I've never heard lyrical G with Chameleon. The Chameleon, yeah. I wish, I wish I could get in touch with these guys. But it's still what we have is time. You know, yeah. as long as we're alive, I'd we'll, love, I'd we'll love be able to hear to, a lyrical G and Chameleon, Chameleon because yeah, lyrical G, baby, cool or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, like all those things. Because yeah. for me, it just makes sense. It's it like sense. You be like, okay, yeah, at this right point, yeah, at this point in time, yeah, yeah, we were able to. Exactly. This time we go. But we've been, we we performed on the same stages and we were together. And I'm sure the respect is mutual. Yeah, yeah. These are my friends as well, so you know. So so. What next? When you when you name the album the OG, it's the tenth album. Usually, people are like, "Okay." Like I said, when I received the Lifetime Achievement Award, I felt like, "Well, I can do anything now yes. without having to worry." So who knows? If I might put this album out and 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 focus on something else. Of course, yes. still with, with whatever in the circles of hip hop, yeah. try to push these youngsters and then try to try to you know keep keep doing do, what I do. With as a producer, mm -hmm. you you're very Eminem because you keep your beats to yourself. Um, uh, yeah, I felt like, I mean, of course I'm growing as a producer, I'm a beat maker, but I keep growing, I keep learning new techniques and new yeah. ways of uh, improving the beat. So I never wanted to give them out until you to so sure. many, until I'm sure that they're proper. They're properly there was one I asked you for and you said no. 
Uh, uh, <laughs> <let's pay for. laughs> no, listen. I got bits there, man. I got bits. <laughs> I'll pass the bits on. I, he says this every, no, every no, time I've no, this, no, this year, no, this year, no, this year, this year, I've managed to at least I've managed to produce what I produce. Joy's songs, Mani Zabala, Joy the Seventh Star. Oh I yes, 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 I saw it in the, in the countdown. Yes. In the top hip hop singles of what it's been in there for like three weeks. Nice. I've, I've just recently produced for uh, one, one one kid called Mapafi. Okay. He's a yeah, he's a he's a, he's a, he's a ghetto rapper. Yeah. I produced one of his songs called Tukole. Hey, yeah. Tukole, let's work. So I've, you I've, have, I've, I've recorded you have, with that. You, you played for me on, on on the new album. You played for me a track. You have your son. Yeah, I have my son on the album. Yeah, my son, album, the, yeah. uh, my son is ten years. I remember when I recorded ah, when yeah, I recorded ten my years uh, on the tenth album. You have I recorded when I recorded my sixth album. No, my eighth album. My sixth album, uh, Grown Man Talk. Yeah, that was a good yeah, one. Yeah, there was a song where he featured, he was a baby. Yeah. Was, I did a song for him called Daddy Loves You. And, yes, yes, you know, yes. So he was just a baby. He was up, I think he was only one year old. Yeah. And I have him on there for da, his da, song. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. He's like trying to matter a few words here. Yeah. So now he's 10, he's 10 years and he, he can speak. He's growing and it, he loves to play he's football. A wrestler. He, li- he loves wrestling <laughs> and football and he loves hip hop. You know, yeah, like loves- whenever I talk, whenever I, I'd, I'd link with you, talk to you. Yeah, we'd be talking like, about, yeah, yeah. I didn't my, show- my, 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 my son, man, is there. He's like, I have to watch Royal Rumble because my son, we keep, when, when you were not around, yeah, you know, yeah. when you were to talk, yeah, I, had to, I, like, I, I have to watch this shit because I talked to my son for like hours. Yeah, about I need to talk about it. I need to keep updated. Yeah, updated about who is the champion and who is doing what. Yo, that's yeah, crazy, so, you know, man. So him be featuring on the album was a good thing. Yeah. Yes. At least full circle. It's come full yeah. circle now. That's what I'm saying. Tenth yeah. album, your yeah. ten year old son features yeah. on it. Yeah. But then, so so, I don't know, man. I feel like I should leave the 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 podcast here. I feel like I should leave this episode here because yeah. it's such a dope thing to say full circle and your son yeah. features on it. Yeah, yeah. You come ah, full that's circle. Where that's where we ended. That's where we ended, my guy. Come full circle. That's where we ended. Your lyrical fucking. Show, <laughs> show, my, show, forever, show, my man. boy, the man. Yo, come on, man. This yeah. is so UG podcast. Happy to be here. Peace and love. We're out of here. Yeah, when the <laughs> album drops, go and purchase a copy, man. hundred. Check out the new single. It's out. Uh, Sitcha Saga. It's out there. The video is trending on there. You go and check me out on YouTube, Mister Lyrical GMC. There you go. Peace. It's out. UG. Are you from you?